already helping out in Lynchburg after the storm. Yeah, Jonathan McNamara just got back from Lynchburg. Thanks so much for coming to see us. Thanks You've for having me. Busy. How many people are you helping out? What's the scope we're talking about in the Lynchburg area? Yeah, well, first of all, I want to say this is not just the Red Cross. This is a series of churches as well as the Salvation Army and community groups that are really rallying. So we're supporting two shelters, one at Thomas Road Baptist Church and another that is in the uh, Madison Heights area that are allowing people who might not need necessarily a place to stay or staying with family to get some supplies, get rest, charge their phones, get some food. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing that over the next couple of days, but we're also doing mobile um, damage assessment. We're going to meet with each individual family, get a sense for the scope of their individual damage, and then we'll be coming back to them over the coming days to offer financial support as well as other resources that are available from other community groups. Now, you guys have already, you guys have been on the ground since pretty much the tornado cleared out and allowed you the opportunity to get there. What is the most difficult part of you guys making sure you guys have the proper setup for these folks mm -hmm. who've been impacted by the tornado? Yeah, well, right now, getting into some of these neighborhoods has still been challenging with the amount of debris that's been down, but also these are dangerous situations. When you're talking about these debris fields, you have nails and other debris that can be very dangerous for folks who are trying to walk through, make sure that they have the information that they need to start the cleanup process safely, but also letting them know that there's a full range of resources available, not just from the Red Cross, but other community groups. And, and you can imagine you're in a very stressful situation. This could be difficult. So you want to tell them a couple of times and, and also just be there as a shoulder to lean on and provide that emotional support, which in these situations can be just as important as some of the financial aid we'll give. Now, we're not talking about a lot of injuries being reported in this situation. And I, I always think, well, I know what to do. I mean, yeah. we don't live in Tornado Alley. This doesn't happen all the time. But you said people he listened to the warnings and paid attention. Yeah, one thing we've learned is technology is becoming such a powerful tool of preparedness. So we had folks who have different apps, whether it's the CBS 6 Act or the Red Cross Emergency app, that were actually notifying them that these storms were coming. So they were able to take steps to prepare, getting in an interior windowless room, a bathroom or a closet. We talked to multiple families today that said that was the difference between them uh, making it out without any injuries and possibly being in a really negative situation. So that's why I would say the viewers here in Richmond, as many of us were fortunate last night, but the next series of storms could, you know, we could be the ones that are impacted. So Listen to Zach Daniel, listen to your other meteorologists here who are providing those warnings because that's the difference in, in getting out of these situations safely. Mm -hmm. Now, what can people do if they want to help out with the American Red Cross? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I want to say first and foremost, there are a number of families who have GoFundMe pages online that are individually for them. So I would, we have a couple that are on our Facebook page to check out. But as always, redcross.org, that allows us to respond before even the storms hit. We were readying volunteers, but will allow us to give the individual support that we can. But also Salvation Army, other partner organizations and community are also raising funds. So I just want to be very clear, this is a community-wide effort to recover. Were you surprised when you actually saw the damage there when you got there? Yeah, it reminded me actually what I've seen out in Oklahoma and other parts wow. of the country. Um, so, but once again, what you saw in this situation is what you see all over the country after disasters. There are people rallying around each other. Their spirits are positive. They were almost cheering us up from some of our volunteers, which is amazing. And they're going to come together, they're going to recover, and they're going to get stronger as a result of this. And that's what you see when disasters strike. It brings out the best in us. And you had, you were showing me, so you have some amazing video. Are you posting that on the local Red Cross yeah. page that people want to see it? And that's available on our Facebook and Twitter accounts at VA Red Cross. But okay. um, these were just, Red right, came up to us and said they wanted us to show us their homes. And it was yeah. amazing the damage that you know a storm that came through that quickly can do to a home and, and just a reminder once again of why preparedness and why taking these warnings seriously is uh, the big difference between getting out safely. Thank you, All right, Jonathan. All right, Jonathan. Thanks, Thanks, of American Appreciate Red Cross. It. Thanks for coming out here.